We have some information on all the bills. Um, we have a little brief legal analysis. If you guys want to learn more about that, we have that for you guys. If you want to find out more about Prop 63 and how to defeat that, come over to our booth as well, and we can help you out with that. If you want to become a member, we'd love to have you over there too. And so I just want to say we're honored to be here today to support this wonderful event, and have a good day. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks a lot. All right. It's Saturday, August 20th. I'm on my way to the Burrow Canyon Shooting Park to attend another NRA ARM or America's Rifle Match. This match is being held by the or being hosted by the Ford Assist Training Group. They're the only ones in SoCal that I know are holding these matches or the ARM. So I'm going out there to show a little support. Um, anyway, haven't fired my AR, my 16-inch AR in a while. I think since the last ARM I went to, so haven't really been doing any drills at my own range. Been used, been, if you've been paying attention to my last vlogs, it's been all working on that uh, Remington 700 project. So we'll see how it goes. I didn't really plan too much for this trip, so I'm just threw my rifle, my ammo, and a little bit of my gear into the truck this morning, and hopefully I didn't forget anything. But pretty much all you need is uh, rifle and ammo, right? So we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna carry my gun in the Everly stock pack. Um, didn't bring my range cart. And so we'll see how that works out because I'm still trying to get a little usage out of my Everly stop before I write a review on it. I wanted to bring up the topic of conversation of AR-15s in California. The reason being is, uh, one, there. If you haven't been paying attention, you don't, you're not in California. Obviously, you're not. You won't be aware. But in California, they passed several new laws that affected gun owners greatly. Uh, the main one that people are looking at is the fact that any AR-15s uh, with a bullet button are now classified as assault weapons in California, which means that you can't buy or sell them in California. You can own them. You just have to register them as assault weapons. Um, this doesn't affect me because I already own assault weapons in California. I have ARs that were purchased before 2000 that I have registered. But the big one that affects me is the magazine capacity restrictions. They now ban outright possession of any magazines 10 rounds or more than 10 rounds. And that affects me because I, don't, I did not own up until two months ago any AR mags uh, less, than, you know, less than 20 rounds. I had all 20s and 30s. And so with that fact, I, I mean, that really hurts because now I have to buy new mags. I have to get rid of my, my 20 and 30 round mags, which I did own prior, prior to 2000 because they were, they were banned in 2000. The purchase and sale of any magazines over 10 were, were, uh, were banned, but you can still own them. They were grandfathered in. So that being said, this changes the, the, the landscape as far as magazines in California and firearms in general. Um, so that's kind of the reason why I'm sort of like not shooting the AR so much anymore is because it's kind of depressing. <laughs> it's kind of a, kind of a stupid thing to say, but it is kind of depressing. So, um, but then again, I did start that Remington 700 rifle project, which I was, that's why I've been shooting as of late, which is why I haven't been shooting my AR much at all as of the past like two or three months. Anyway, um, heading to the AR, the AR match. And so this is get me back behind the gun um not, i don't know what to say as far as what we're going to do um for those that don't know who are not in california we are trying to get uh referendums um signed and, and approved to repeal these gun laws that were just passed but you know i don't want to sound uh you know negative or like it's it's very it, I, it's very difficult for this to, to have an effect, and I don't know that we can make an impact, but I, I hope we can. I really do. 
So what's really important to remember now is we got four bills on the floor right now, and the end of the legislative session is September 1. So if you're not contacting your legislators, if you're not on NRA ILA's alerts or apps to find out what's happening in Sacramento today as we speak, well, today they're traveling, but next week's gonna be very critical. We don't wanna show our hand. We don't wanna see any more gut and amend bills. We know there's some bills up there that's gonna hurt us. We know Kevin DeLeon on July 4th on NBC said he's not done. So we've gotta make sure he's done. We've gotta keep on doing what we're doing. Seeing this grassroots movement that Boris started off is, is amazing. And everybody have fun, be safe, and let's shoot a match. This match is comprised of five stages. We're using four berms. We're using berms 3C, 3B, 3A, and across the venue over there on 7A, we're going to have stages four and five. So you're going to have five stages. You don't have to shoot them chronologically. You could go up to any of the stages to shoot. Again, if you have questions of the course of fire, you can always ask any of the ROs, the guys in blue, to run it through your head. Also, I suggest when you come up to a stage, watch how they run it. Watch how the, the shooter's running it up, that he's up on deck, and then you get an idea of the flow. There's gonna be a course of fire on every station. It's gonna be on a clipboard. It's gonna look something like this and it will describe your course of fire. one of the bays at the Burrow Canyon Shooting Park. Just fired my first stage, which didn't go too well. My zero seems off. Still waiting to get up on the second stage of fire, which is just 10 rounds on paper. Uh, a lot of people out today. It uh, looks like they had some representatives from the NRA and the CRPA trying to get people to sign the petitions. But it seems like they have a lot of vendors and trying to get a lot of support for the match. But it seems like attendance is pretty high compared to the last time we were out here. Go to load and make ready. Alright, shooter ready? Shooter, stand by!
three, four, point four, two. This stage of fire is 10 targets with two rounds per target. Total 10 rounds. The issue here is that you're shooting from one barricade for cover and you can't step beyond the left or right lateral limits of that barricade. So when you engage the left side target, some people are trying to transition the left shoulder, which is one way to do it. But personally, if you can lean out far and still aim with your, your, your right shoulder or the opposite way, if you can lean out right and shoot with your left shoulder, if you're left shoulder dominant or right shoulder dominant, it's going to be easier in my opinion to do that. Um, I would rather shoot at a cannon angle than try to transition if you have issues transitioning to your shoulder and you can't get good cheek weld like I did. I shot that stage earlier and I tried to do a left hand transition I couldn't get the right cheek weld for uh, uh, sight picture so I just went quickly to a right shoulder and leaned far left with an angle or a cannon, a cannon rifle to shoot those targets and I still shot all my targets uh, within the A-zone. Shooter ready, stand by. I had a weird round. It sounded funny. Okay. So just show me how that works. So basically, it's a lower cover for the okay. fire control group. That's it. The magazine still available is open, so you put like a gun bolt if you wanted to. You just had to take out your pivots and take down pins, which is mine is super tight and it opens up to a hole, so it covers it. And then the cover will block, like you said, the cover we'll the cover block, on that... Will block the hammer from It blocks the hammer from hitting the, 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 the low receiver. Yeah, because it basically hits this part of the plastic. Okay. So once you do that, it's just basically the same thing as you putting an upper on it. Just lock it down, and pivot and it down. And this is your first design that you had made? Yeah, this is the first one. The second one was taller and thicker in that point and also this is more stable okay like this part is actually a lot more stable because this prototype one is a little bit wonky on this part. what kind of it's a polymer or is it a i, I don't know it's the plastics that come off 3d printers so, okay. so it's, it's like, 3d printer plastic basically yeah exactly so the in terms of extreme heat it's not going to be designed for desert or anything close for it what about solvents though i ch i use um what do you call that Hoppies? So. Yeah, I use hops and it works pretty well. And also I use Fire Clean and it works And it well. doesn't damage it. Now, so far it hasn't done anything to it. But you can see it's like it's all greased out. So it's like it hasn't done anything. Push it in fire. It's in. And that, that didn't hit your, it didn't hit the uh, lower? No, it hit basically the plastic because okay. you actually see it move. Okay. So when you move this, you take the pins out. Now if I get the fire, open it up, you see that the hammer is still not even striking yet. Mm -hmm. like if you look inside the well, you see the hammer hasn't touched yet. Okay. It's still touching the plastic. So if you move this all the way up, you can see. Yeah. Now it's okay, striking. I got it. So it's like there's definitely a contact where the hammer never never strikes the hammer. So it's it's you got it done through Shapeway? Yeah, I designed I 3D designed a this pattern okay. basically built this entire thing and then I just be, just dumped it on Shapeways so I can print it out since I don't have a 3D printer. So if I were going to order one like online when we get out of here, it's going to cost you 40 bucks? I think so. Whatever it costs on Shapeways right now. Where are they at? It's the hell I'm in New York. They're in the United States though? Yeah. Okay. It's a dot com so dude. And it comes in multiple colors. Whatever right. colors they wanted to print on there. I gotta get one then. That looks really cool because I've been trying to get Raven Concealment to make a lower a lower cover. Like yeah, that. that's the thing. Because I wanted someone else to build it because this is way not cheap. Yeah. Like doing it this way through a 3D printer is definitely not cheap compared to someone mass producing a mold and just producing a cheap $5 or $3 item. Yeah. Because that's literally what this is. It's not, it's not expensive. But it's just because I'm using Shapeways and 
it's just cost of material from Shapeway is expensive. So, yeah. Cool. I'm going to have to get one. Stand by. I think I missed that far target. I think I, think I got you right there. I think I shot that far target twice. So that last stage of fire I just shot, uh, the fifth stage, uh, technically they're not in any particular order, but uh, the last one I just shot is uh, 24 rounds total, 12 targets, two rounds apiece. But the problem is you kind of accidentally shoot more than you need to because you'll engage targets from different windows and doors and you might accidentally shoot the same target again. So while that doesn't hurt you, you uh, in terms of penalties, you're just wasting time because you're you're saying you're not done until you fire your last round and you quit. So it's, it's in your best interest to remember that you engage the target. So it's kind of trying to be aware of things while still moving fast. So you have to like pay attention to detail. The match is over, it was five stages. They used the international multi-gun uh, scoring system. Basically any two hits on target uh, is good to go, or one A zone hit. So it's a pretty good, again, the match is really good for beginner shooters and people who are not really used to inter, uh, competition shooting. So they can get used to how the procedures work and how to handle their guns safely in a competition environment. Um, my match went well, only the first stage again. It was the same, same thing as happened as last time. I missed the steel target a couple, on a couple shots, and for some reason, I missed uh, the 100 yard target high and right. I don't know why, but uh, I shot after the match was done and they were like not doing anything on stage, I asked them to shoot the steel again. And so when I put three rounds on target, it was, it was exactly where I wanted it, or was aiming at. So I aimed left to hit left, aimed at six o'clock, hit the bottom, aimed right, and I hit the right. So I think it was just the a uh, question of just the cold, clean bore my first few rounds that morning, and I just wasn't on as far as my sight picture, my sight alignment, and my fundamentals. But again, today was a good match, the NRA uh, AR match. Lots of people showed up, and it was uh, smooth, well run, and hopefully shoot it again. Um, I haven't shot my AR uh, for a long, uh, since I think the last ARM, and so it's been about two or three months since I actually shot my AR, my 16-inch AR, and so. It's nice to get the uh, gun out and shooting, uh, my, shooting my AR again. And since I've been using my, I've been working on my 700 Remington, my Remington 700 bolt gun, that project's been going along. So it's just nice to get out and shoot the AR. Anyway, uh, that's it for the vlog. Really not much to talk about other than the, uh, just getting out here and shooting on the range at Burrow Canyon and the uh, current climate as far as California and the new laws. Uh, until then, I'm not sure when I'm going to vlog again, uh, when I'm going to hit the range again, but I'm probably going to do some work with the uh, Remington 700, so just stay tuned on that. Um, anyway, today is August 20th, Saturday. Uh, that's the end of this vlog. Shooter ready? Yep.